as a CAD drafter, the biggest hurdle that you have to overcome is getting your first clients. And today I'm going to be showing you how you're going to accomplish this. And I'm not just going to read through this PowerPoint verbatim. I actually want you to listen to what I have to say, because again, I'm going to give you my number one sales tip when it comes to dealing with inbound clients. My name is Jason Hunt. I'm a professional AutoCAD trainer, and I run the only Lancer drafting program in the world. And I also run a program that teaches AutoCAD drafters how to go freelance by using their skill set by implementing basic business structures. Because to be honest, most of you guys don't even do that. You always complain, oh, I got to get CAD clients here and there. How do I get my first CAD client? Guys, literally, uh, every other business on the world has figured out a way to get clients, but for somehow you can't. And that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. So don't be offended. I'm not here to make you jealous or anything. I want you guys to understand that opportunities out here exist like this, and I want you to take fully advantage of them. So I'm going to go over a couple really good methods to getting your first client and getting your foot in the door and how to market yourself on the interwebs, right? So that way you can gain and garner your first CAD client in whatever field it might be. So I'm coming, I'm coming right out the bat at you guys who continue to think that platforms are going to provide you the best clients. Uh, Fiverr, Upwork, uh, people per hour, anything like that. Um, stay the fuck away, okay? Uh, these platforms are garbage for many, 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 many reasons. But I just want you to understand this, okay? And this is just sort of my, my base understanding that I like to get across to everybody. Inside of CAD drafting, there is no good place to find clients. As a client, there is no good place to find a drafter. But here's the thing. If you can make it happen by building out that bridge yourself, you own the entire fucking throughput. You own everything. And so there is no worry about where your next client's going to be because you own the system. So stop relying on people or stop relying on other platforms to do this work for you because it's just pure laziness at this point, okay? Because every other business has marketing, they have sales. And even if you're doing it yourself, there is ways to do it, all right? You just have to put in work. And I think really what it comes down to is laziness. And that's why people love these platforms, all right? But here's the thing. There's so much competition with people who are in the third world who just basically will do anything for five bucks an hour. Why would you want to compete with them when the people that actually are willing to pay good money are out there? They just cannot find you and there's no bridge between it. You have to create it. So another strategy that you guys might think about implementing is checking online job boards. And this is usually called uh, reverse job hacking. As a freelancer, if you go and you find... Uh, like on LinkedIn or Indeed uh, or even Craigslist, even Facebook groups, uh, positions for jobs that are hiring in office that have maybe been, you know, six weeks plus since they've gotten an applicant, that might be a good opportunity for you to sort of uh, put your foot in the door and try to say, hey, listen, I'll do this for you as a freelancer. Um, and that is a good opportunity. But I will say this, it's very one-to-one. -one. You have to do outreach directly. And a lot of times you're going to get a no. And so it's just not consistent. It's, un it's inconsistent work. It's not scalable. Um, and it leads to unreliable clients. And you're still chasing the, ch the clients instead of attracting them. We have to remember that anytime that you're going to somebody, you're coming to them at a lower level than they are above you. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just means that it's a lot different of a, uh, of a uh, sort of method, right? Or sort of an understanding if it's the opposite where they're coming to you makes things a lot easier when people are coming to you and how you deal with them. And so checking job boards can be good, but for long-term sustainability, I really don't recommend it. Next up is cold emailing and direct outreach to companies. Now this is okay. Uh, it works uh, sometimes, right? But this is pretty much a numbers game. It's a volume game. If you want to email 10,000 people, yes, you're probably going to get a yes. But the thing is, it's not going to be sustainable. Um, there's not a lot of competition when it comes to emails doing this. Uh, but the thing is, they usually just treat it as spam because at the same time, you are then going to them, right? Good freelancers do not uh, get clients. They attract clients. And so that's what we have to understand. We have to change the paradigm in the way that you think as far as getting clients. And this is why cold emailing, while it is okay, and if you are all right with setting up a, you know, an email list or whatever. It's better used for when you already know somebody having sort of a uh, email lead list that you sort of hit, maybe like a newsletter or something, someone that someone signs up for, you're giving them value and therefore they want to see what it is that you have to say. And then sometimes you can pitch your services, but for direct outreach and cold outreach, I don't really think it's that great of an idea. So here's the best strategy for getting clients, right? And it's actually having them come to you. And we do this in a variety of three different methods. Number one, it is a direct outreach system, but doing it the right way, a social funnel system by using content to sh showcase your value that has people coming to you all the time. And number three is a paid ads funnel. So you need to show your work, join the industry groups and actually network. And yeah, that might sound hard to you, but you actually have to talk to people to get clients, crazy thought. 
right? And you have to create valuable content. This is what's going to separate you from literally 99.999% of people is that you make content. And the type of content we do, it's not even that difficult, okay? I don't even do video posts on LinkedIn, on industry forums, on Facebook groups, all right? It's text posts. It's very simple text posts with an image, and they perform fantastically, right? I can run up 100,000 impressions in a week. You know how easy it is for me to sell something when I have 100,000 eyeballs looking at me? Really freaking easy, okay? And this is what a lot of the students inside of my program are coming along, is that by about six weeks inside of the program, they're getting about 10 to 11,000 impressions on their service. So imagine if you tried to email or call directly 10 to 11,000 people. That would take you months. But instead, in literally days, you can do the exact same accomplishments, right? And have that many eyeballs looking at you, where you then have people coming to you. It's so much easier to sell. So first and foremost, you got to post on LinkedIn and industry-specific forums and groups. Um, LinkedIn is full of business owners. And I think a lot of times when you think of marketing, right, you're going to get led astray simply because you see Instagram, you see TikTok, you see what I probably do on Instagram, okay? That is for a different market. But if you're looking after drafting clients, you do not want to be there. All right, because the actual companies are on LinkedIn. The way that it works with if you make a post and someone likes it, their friend can see it and then potentially their friend's friend can see it and they're all happy to be in the same industry. That's what we want to do because on Instagram and TikTok, you might get somebody who sees your stuff, they like it, but they're not even part of the industry or they're not even eligible to be your target market. For example, they could be someone who's younger than the demographic that you're trying to hit, or they could be older or totally not even the correct field. And so you're not going to, a small percentage of your viewership might be your key audience, which is not good for marketing, okay? Instead, we want to use LinkedIn or industry groups because they're all there. And every time you now market, 100% of them that see that, that thing, that item, could be qualified. So what do I even post? What do I even post on these platforms? Well, I really like to have three different types of posts. And number one is going to be a value-based post. If you can give someone something and teach them something that they can implement in under 24 hours, that is very good information. That basically proves your competency with inside of the industry, whether you're in engineering, architecture, uh, electrical design, it doesn't matter, right? If you can show them something, teach them something, maybe a CAD tips or trick, or maybe like some, some industry, uh, you know, hack or whatever, right? That is good value that you can give away. Number two is going to be sort of insights, right? This is really what, how you get your uh, your viewership and how you get your impressions for the week is that you stir up a little bit of controversy, talk about the industry, pros and cons, or maybe something that pisses you off, have a good hook. And as long as it has a bit of question behind it, people are going to comment. That's what is really what drives engagement, engagement on these platforms in order to get viewership. Uh, and then finally it's called action, right? I like to have something called a CTA post. That is literally just me saying, and I only do this like once a week. You know, I literally only do this once a week, which is call to action. Hey, by the way, if you're in surveying and you want to learn how you can draft in surveying, click here. That's what it is. It's basically your advertisement. But when you get people inside of these buckets, right, they follow you. That's free advertising every time you make a post. And between the impressions that you get from your insight post and the value that you get from your value post by just giving away stuff, tips and tricks, right, that is going to garner attention, but also liking to what your product is. That's going to mean that you have a much better time when people come to you because you are seen as the authority in the space. So outside of a social funnel system, uh, what is a way that we can get uh, leads on autopilot? And that is running ads. You can literally just put money behind a problem and it will solve it. Of course, you have to have a good ad and a good ad strategy, but ads are really simple because once you've made it, you just put money behind it and it works, which is really great. Um, so simple ad targeting. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend if you are doing ad targeting, you can use platforms like Meta and Facebook. And the reason why is because you're getting that key audience with those advertisements, it's targeted. All right. And so if they're going directly to, Hey, you know, I do X, Y, Z drafting. If you need a drafter, click here and it goes to your, uh, you know, to your booking page or to your calendar page. That's fantastic because it is targeted unlike content on these pages. Okay. I would think of doing content on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok as like the last thing, the actual content on that side of things. But, uh, for, you know, uh, Facebook groups, uh, LinkedIn, industry forums, YouTube, I think those are where you should start when it comes to content. But for advertising, you can advertise anywhere because as long as someone's there and they're inside of your target group, they're going to receive the ad. So they're only qualified people that see that ad, which is great for conversions. So literally just book them directly into a consultation call. This is the whole thing. No matter how fancy we get on the front end of marketing, right? When it comes to getting clientele, at the end of the day, you're going to get them in a phone call and you're going to book them in for a consultation call. And you're going to sign them on a contract. So all the bullshit that happened beforehand, we can just cut that shit, get right to the end, which is like phone call, Booking, confirmation, and then close them on a contract. You know, what's the point in doing all the stuff in front of it? Keep it simple, right? And this is how you have better throughput of leads because you're paying good attention to them, right? And uh, they like the process because it's easy. Make it easy to sell them. 
So how do I do this? Well, if everything I covered in today's video interests you, I have a full video and guide showing you, right, how you are going to get into freelance drafting and with the potential of booking in for a meeting with me uh, to join my program, which literally teaches people this exact skill set implementation, live training that shows you how to build out your direct uh, system, your social funnel system, and your paid ads funnel, right? So that way you can go after clients inside of your industry and make an income by getting clients on a freelance basis for you. So go ahead and check that out. And if you have any questions, go ahead and message me on Instagram or leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.